Hey all, it's really warmed up here in Western North Carolina. We've got definitely temperatures in the 80s during the day and it's got all humid on us in the last few weeks. Uh, we've not had much rain. Okra is known for being drought tolerant because it's got this pretty awesome root network. But at the same time, it does like the rain and grows quicker and produces better yields when um, it's not allowed to dry out. So I'm not worried about the okra not surviving, but um, it might slow us down a little bit if we don't get any rain anytime soon. I want to show you my two little rows of Whidbey White. Uh, I've really enjoyed seeing all the uh, photographs and conversations happening on the Facebook group, so I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are all engaging with that. It's been pretty fun uh, to hear the stories from the different places. Um, mixed germination, mixed planting times, mixed, mixed everything and it kind of just reminds me and I kind of knew this from working at So True Seed for, for a long time that you know this when it comes to gardening or farming it's really hard to make any rules because everyone's experience seems to be slightly different and most of the time we get away um, with doing all sorts of different things and it, it all works out in the end so uh, thanks for following along let's have a quick look at my okra and um, I'll tell you a little bit more about what we're doing. This is the overview of the whole field. Every red label or yellow label is a different variety. So we've actually got a hundred different varieties in the ground. The, the yellow labels are actually related species. So all the red labels are Abelmotius esculentus or okra. All the yellow ones are Able motius, but they're different species within that same genus. So it's pretty fun to see some of Okra's extremely close relatives. And if we come down here, we've got the Whidbey White Improved. I'm using the Improved title a little loosely. It's the one that we're working on collectively to bring it to this like uniformity that we've talked about in previous videos. You can see beyond needing to weed a little bit of grass, We've got a couple of true leaves on most plants and you know it always stalls out a little bit with a transplant shock because we, we did transplants uh, and then I expect it to start jumping up uh, pretty soon especially if we get some of the rain that's forecast for this week and then you all know if you've seen previous videos that we're also growing the Whidbey White question mark which came from you know the descendants of the original family uh, from the mid 1850s and we don't really know what to expect here one thing is we're seeing some red coloration uh, in some of the petioles which I've been selecting against in my population and you know it's a it's a little bit young to really know uh, if we're going to see much significant because beyond the reds and the greens most of the okra looks kind of similar at this stage. So we'll keep you up to date on that mystery. Hope this okra starts getting its roots in and, and popping up pretty soon. And I'm hoping we can expect pod harvest or initial pod assessment in the, you know, six week-ish range. We, we aim, uh, actually no, mid, mid July. Yeah, yeah, that's about six weeks. So six, six week range is what we're aiming for. Um, so yeah. Hello and welcome from Franny's Farm.